Hey, hey, good morning. Happy first day of spring in Australia. Hard to believe. Yep, winter is finished with and uh, whew, what a winter it's been. Anyway, hello everyone. I just want to check my connection is right. We had a bit of an issue yesterday and I've got my spy out there, Esther, who's going to give me a thumbs up that she could see the live thing today. Hey Tam, good morning. Oh, thanks Esther. Okay. Do you know what happened yesterday? There was apparently no notice that I was on live. And so what the heart, the best part about it was, was those of you who messaged me and said, is everything okay? We can't see where you are. And I'm so happy to know that you care. Thank you. Hello everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Hey Sue. Good morning everyone. Good to see two Lisas here um, and Joan. And Superhero42, hello everybody. Good morning, good morning. Quince Autumn, that's a beautiful name actually. Happy to hear second pot of tomato soup. I love it, I love it. Happy Wednesday, everybody. 1st of September, first day of spring. Sorry, just need a sip of tea. It's actually beautiful here in Sydney today. It is t-shirt weather. It is definitely spring. And I wonder if we've seen the last of the winter. Now that I've just been to the petrol station and bought four bags of wood, it's probably no more winter. But anyway, good morning, Brizzy Chris. How are you going in Brisbane? Good morning, Melanie in Perth. Hope you are free. Hope all of you who were in quarantine are now out. And the rest of us are just in lockdown waiting for, I don't know what, everyone to be vaccinated. Good morning, everyone. Ah, chocolate ripple biscuits on sale at Coles in Sydney. No, are you in Sydney? Or I think so. Um, good morning, Jane. Happy spring to you too. I'm glad it's sunny in Melbourne as well. Um, good morning, Pam. Good to see you here. And Vonnie and Nebulous 2001. Welcome, welcome. And, and in Brisbane, it's beautiful. So we've got beautiful, the whole eastern part of Australia is beautiful. Hope it's nice in Perth as well. Um, I'm really happy to be here today because I did miss you guys. I know I saw you yesterday, but yesterday was a weird one because we only had a few people on and I was wondering what was going on and where was everybody and now I know it wasn't my fault. It was just some Instagram glitch. So we have to take it up with Instagram, which is a hard thing because there's no one to talk to there. It's very, very difficult if you've got an issue with Facebook or Instagram because there's no one to talk to. Anyway, oh, it's rainy and cold in Perth. Sorry, Perth. Good morning, everyone else who's just coming in. Today we're making something, it's quick and easy, but you know, like all my recipes, they're quick and easy, but you know, I talk for 45 minutes, cook for five minutes, and there's our session. But that's what we're here for, we're here to connect. And the more I think about all of you and what we're creating here, this beautiful family, the happier I am. I mean, we've really got something special. And I hope, I know actually, that so many of you feel the same way that I do about what we've got going on here. And I love it. Um, glad to hear somebody made the carrot simmers and enjoyed it. We are up to here with carrot simmers. And I have to say, a week, when's Rosh Hashanah next week? I don't think we're going to have it on the menu because we have eaten it too many times. And I'm, I have to say, I'm sick of it. I'm over it. Can't do it anymore. I did make a brisket last night and I was going to talk to you about brisket. Um, so Gary from Field to Fork brought me two pieces of brisket to try. Because my issue with brisket, and I've discussed it with all my friends many times, I want to cook it so it's, my mum used to do veal brisket on the bone. You could cook it for hours and hours, and because it's on the bone, it just never went dry. When you cook a brisket from the butcher, there's the fatty part and the drier part, the lean part, the pointy end and the flat end, I think it is. And I can't get the flat end to be is that the right one? To be as succulent as the as the other one. And I, I can't remember which is which now. And so I was speaking to Gary about this issue and he brought me two pieces, the, the, the separated brisket. So the fatty part and the lean part. And I cooked them in separate pans with the same sauce, adjusted the times. And sure, the flat end was nice, but it's not the same. The fatty part was unbelievably succulent and juicy and all the fat caramelizes with the sauce and then you baste it and baste it and so when we add this, the that part of the brisket it was amazing and the other one i can honestly leave it i don't ever need to eat that part of the brisket cooked in this way so if you want to know the details if you're in sydney and you're not kosher because they're not kosher and you want to get some brisket 
for any time. I'm going to put a post on Instagram sometime saying exactly what to ask for. It was beautiful. It was so well marbled and it was so much flavour. So anyway, that's my brisket story. Um, there'll be more on my socials about that. And good morning, Liz. Nice to see you there. Um, late again. Do you know what we're going to do with you, Liz? Like, seriously, you think you can just turn up? What is it? Six minutes late? Mm, not sure. Well, what does everyone think? Nah, you've got to be here on time. You've missed it all. We finished. See, I finished. They're made. We're done. No, of course I'm joking. Of course I'm joking. Um, okay, let's talk Sesame Street. I, I've been saying Sesame Street for the last three days because it just comes out of my mouth. And um, it's Sesame Sweet. So this is a beautiful recipe from the late Jack Sages, who Natanya's family knew, which is how we got him into the book. And he was a great cook, Turkish heritage, and cooked all these beautiful things. And this is something that he grew up eating in Turkey, these sesame sweets. And you know, they're wrapped in cellophane, and they're absolutely delicious. Um, I've been making lots of them, because I want to make this as easy as possible for you guys. And I have... Um, tried a few different ways so I can I've sort of I guess particularly people who are nervous of working with sugar and melting sugar I just wanted it to be simple and easy for the first one you can make bigger quantities which is why I updated the recipe last night I decided a smaller batch is much easier yeah Liz you know I'm jo joking about you being late of course you can be late because you can watch it anytime on IGTV so you know no pressure anybody um, Dora this is in thank you for reminding me this is in The Feast Goes On, which is this book, second one, and it's on page, because I know somebody's going to ask me, page 53, Sesame Sweet. Um, and the mixture is not very clear. Well, it is a bit, well, sorry, I shouldn't say that, the mixture. The recipe, no, it is quite clear. I just wanted to do it here so we can talk through it together, because first time, I think we need to pay attention. The other thing I want to say is when you're working with hot sugar like this, you need to really, really pay attention. I urge you to take extra care and not get burnt. We did this for a cooking demo years ago and, I, and you roll it out between baking paper, which of course I'll show you, and a little bit of stuck out on the baking paper and I put my arm in it and I burnt myself and I just had to carry on and I had such a terrible burn and it taught me now that every time I start rolling with baked paper, it's like PTSD. It reminds me to be really careful. So you really need to take care is all I want to say. So Liz, which would be the best one to purchase? You mean which book? Mm, that's a really hard question to answer. I think you need the set of four in an ideal world um, because that covers everything. But I think if you're just starting with Monday Morning Cooking Club, I would go first and the fourth. I think that's where I'd start. The first is like, you know, our community, our home, where we started. It's got the most beautiful recipes, a lot from the old world. And the new one is modern and current and um, has the most beautiful sweet recipes with one savoury chapter. So, but then two and three are also great. So you really need the set of four. I can't really decide which. Uh, and the set of four, you've got everything you'll need for cooking for the rest of your life. And I'm not joking because that's all I ever use. Anyway, all right, enough talking. Do we think it's enough? Yeah, let's get cooking. Oh, I need my tea this morning. Don't know why some mornings we need it. Okay, I want to show you what I made yesterday. So this is version one. It's thicker. It's not brown. So I didn't toast my nuts, my sesame seeds enough. And I didn't cook my sugar enough. And you know what? It's still pretty nice. There's nothing wrong with this, but that's a pale version, which is, you know, okay. But that's not what I'm aiming for. Then I nailed it, okay? This is what I want. It's not so thick. It's golden brown. They're both really snappy, okay? Yum. And even this one, okay? So they're both good. They're both delicious. That's what you get not toasting so much, not cooking so much, your sugar, not cooking your sugar so well, and this is what you get when you nail it. So that's sort of the range we're heading towards, okay? I'm gonna put that aside for the moment. 
And let's go through what we're going to need. Good morning, Amit. How are you? Nice to see you. Okay, first thing you're going to need a fry pan. So let's go through the ingredients first. So this is the half version of the recipe I originally posted. If you've measured the original, I suggest you re-measure because I think, I really think it's easier to work with a small quantity the first time. I really do. Okay, so I want to urge you to do that. Um, okay, so you're going to need one cup of sesame seeds and it's just white raw sesame seeds and I want to say that I always keep mine in the fridge. I may have told you this before but once years ago I had them in the pantry in a jar or a Tupperware and I came to see them one day, <laughs> picked them up and there was like a whole city of ants or bugs that had made a whole, the whole city in the sesame seeds. And I realized that sesame seeds have sometimes got little things in them and not that you want to know that, but if they're, if they're in the fridge, maybe, I don't know, I guess the eggs are still there. So I shouldn't have even told you that story. It's a bad story, but I want to tell you is just let keep them in the fridge. Okay. Cause then you won't get cities of animals in your sesame seeds. So I've got one cup of sesame seeds, which is 125 grams. I have got the same weight. Okay. But different cup measure. So that's one cup of sesame seeds, 125 grams. And then I've got 125 grams of caster sugar, which is a half a cup and two teaspoons, okay? So it's, a, the measurement are different, but the weight's the same, okay? So let me, I don't want to confuse you because I'm confusing myself. So we've got a heaped half cup of caster sugar, one cup of sesame seeds, and we're gonna add one tablespoon of honey, okay? That's the ingredients and a bit of salt if you want. It's up to you. I've been nibbling it with sprinkled salt and it's actually quite nice. You're gonna need a frying pan to toast your sesame seeds and you're going to need a saucepan to cook your sugar, honey and then add the sesame seeds, okay? So that's the equipment you'll need. You'll also need, and you need to get it ready now, some baking paper and you're gonna need two sheets like this. Okay. Um, just like that quite big, like two ruler lengths, okay, that we're going to use on the bench when we're ready. I'll set that up shortly. And a rolling pin, okay. That's everything you're going to need today. Um, I want to show you, because I made these just now, Jake, bless his soul, wanted some croutons with his salads, that's Jake, my son, for lunch. So I had some leftover sourdough, I cut it up, I cut it into pieces and tore some, cut some, drizzled it generously with olive oil, put a little bit of salt, put the oven on 185, cook them for about 30 minutes, and really, they are, listen to this. Who's jealous? Hands up if you're jealous. Who wants to have this whole tray? Ah, so easy to make, just wanted to show you, made those this morning. All right, put them aside, let's get cooking. First things first, let's turn our stove on and we're going to toast the sesame seeds. The thing about sesame seeds, toasting anything on the stove is that they burn really easily. You think, oh, nothing's happening, nothing's happening. I'm just going to go over there and do something, make a cup of tea. You then forget about them and then you go, something's burning. Yeah. You've got to stay by the pan, okay? There's no going anywhere here. I'm going to use a wooden spoon. Okay, don't leave these. Do not go anywhere. Once they're in the stove, I don't want you to move, okay? So, sesame seeds into the pan. And you want them to be in one good layer. You don't want them deep because then they'll just take ages. Okay, just like that. And I'm going to cook them, okay? So, our uh, David Morgan, who styled all the photos in all our books, so he comes in and he gets the plates and the boards and the knives and he like takes the cake that we've made and, and just puts it in a beautiful position with beautiful props. That's what the stylist does and he's amazing. He's done three out of four of our books and he put on Instagram once a picture of himself. He tied his apron string. It's very dangerous and I'm not suggesting that you try it, but he tied his apron string to the handle of the thing when he was doing sesame seeds so he didn't leave. Um, isn't that funny? Yeah. So. Stand here and don't go anywhere. Yes, Melanie, it was one tablespoon of honey. Um, I The reason I've doubled the honey, because I just think the mixture needed a tiny bit more liquid in it to make it just a tiny bit easier to spread. 
and I did that by mistake. I halved the rest of the mixture last night when I was testing it and I forgot to halve the honey and it was the best one ever. So that's why we've got double the honey. Okay, all right. Um, okay, so is there a substitute for the sesame seeds? You know what, there's lots of substitutes. You could use, we've got a recipe for, for like um, pumpkin seed brittle, but which is a whole different thing, you cook it differently. But I don't see why you couldn't use pumpkin seeds or sunflower seeds in this, or any nuts really, you could do slivered almonds, any raw nut would be fine. Um, I think it would be great to do with anything, but it's just lovely with sesame, but yes, you could do it with all of those things. So you can see, just toss them around, take your time. I've got it on high heat, I'm gonna turn it down now to medium. Put it on high because I want them to start cooking. I want the oils to start heating in the sesame and I want to keep cooking. Um, did you know, I just read this a few weeks ago, that pregnant women should not now eat sesame seeds or tahini. It's, off, it's on the list of things pregnant women can't eat along with 5,000 other things. Um, so just telling you that. Did anyone know that? So I'm not sure why that is, um, but anyway, okay, so mine is starting to toast. I'm going to turn it down. What I want you to do is to grab the bowl that you measured it in. We're going to put them back into the bowl, okay, because we're going to take them off as soon as they're just about cooked. Like when you fry onions, when the oils get hot, they're going to keep cooking when you take them out. And these are really easy to burn if you don't pay attention. So if I spend my time reading what you're saying and not focusing, they're going to burn like they are already. So let's just make sure they don't do that. So keep them moving in the pan. You can do it like that. You can use your spoon. Just keep them moving, okay? Um, Jan, is it the cities that grow the sesame seeds that, have the, that make it a problem to eat? I don't know. I don't know what it is. I must look it up, actually, and find out why. Um, you can't. So I'm just toasting them, not quite ready yet. You saw how golden I want them to be. They're not going to cook in the sugar for long, so they're not going to have a chance to get more golden then. So you really want your sesame seeds to be lovely and golden. But let's take our time. I'm turning it down now to low. The oils are hot in the sesame and they're cooking away. Smells lovely and toasty. Okay, um, and just keep them moving in the pan. I've got no oil in the pan or anything like that. The sesame seeds come with their own oil inside. Um, I'm actually going to get a bigger bowl because that's it's a really silly size bowl. It's not going to be any use at all when I tip them in. Okay, so how are we going? See, nice and golden, smelling delicious. Um, oh, Mogs, I'm glad you made the date and chocolate cake. Um, it was good, wasn't it? It's actually delicious. I haven't known a cat that can bake actually, so it's quite impressive, really. But I hope you chop the things in the food processor because I know cats have a difficult time holding a knife. Um, yeah, oh, so, so you think it's the weevils that were actually in, that I was talking about, that are the problem for pregnant women, perhaps. Yeah, could be it. Because you know all these things have got, no, I'm not even gonna go there. I'm not gonna talk about weevils today, all right. I did bring it up though. All right, I think that's just about done. How are yours going, those of you who are pushing along? Okay, yum. You can smell it. it smells toasty. You know, I say to you often that um, cooking is so multi-sensory. You know, it's not just what you can see. It's what you can smell. It's what you can hear. Are they crackling? Are they toasting? Um, that's it. Okay, I think that's great. I'm quite happy with that. And as I always do, I say I'm happy and then keep going another minute. I'm just about happy with that. What do you think? Does that look ready to you? Oh, it's such a pleasure. Thank you for that, thank you. That's lovely. For the people in the future that can't see that, um, Polizzi says, thank you for all your hard work, keeping us informed and entertained. It's such a pleasure. Okay. Um, oh, so Esther says you have to avoid sesame seeds the first three to four months. Really? What is that? Okay. So I'm happy with my sesame seeds. And remember, they're going to continue toasting a little bit. They're pretty good. Okay. Smell lovely. Very hot. Set them aside for the moment. 
Now we go on to part two. There are three parts for this. Part one, toasting the sesame seeds. Part two, melting the sugar and the honey. Put the sesame in. And part three is rolling it out, which is the part that's fraught with danger. Okay, and I'm not joking. I, I say it lightly, but I don't mean it. Got to be really, really careful um, with this hot stuff. I've burnt myself too many times. Okay, into the pan we are putting, and I'm using nonstick, and I suggest you do that. I am putting my caster sugar, which is half a cup and a bit, 125 grams, and I'm gonna add one tablespoon of honey. And I'm gonna eyeball it because I think that's fine. Okay, so just put a little blob of honey in that, and I'm gonna turn this on. And this takes about 10 minutes, so we're gonna have some chatting time, and I don't have to really pay attention. But everyone is cooking along, Turn it on to medium, get yourself a wooden spoon, and we need to get stirring. But before we do that, just in the beginning, I want you to clear your bench space, and I'm gonna move the phone in a minute. And I want you to put one of your baking papers, remember that baking paper is curved, so don't put it that way, put it curved down so it stays flat onto your bench top, okay? Can you see what I'm doing? Yeah, you can see the edge of it. Have the other one next to it, these are the two pieces of baking paper, and have your rolling pin ready, okay? Because we need to work fast once the sugar is done. So your baking paper needs to be on the bench. If you're cooking along, please do it now. And then come back to your sugar and honey. Now, we're gonna just mix this. And we're gonna get a, I'm gonna call it a sludgy sugar mixture in a minute, or in a couple minutes. Turn it down, start it high, and then turn it down to medium. And it's going to be this sludgy honey and sugar mixture. And then we're going to cook that for a couple minutes, okay? Um, oh, Wendy, I'm happy you bought a non-stick saucepan. I love them. I've just ordered another one because when Sam, one of my other darlings, moved out a few weeks ago, he said, can I have some of your saucepans? And I had a couple of non-stick saucepans, like a 20 centimetre and an 18, that I use all the time. And they're a bit scratched and whatever. And I thought, you know what? I can be a good mother. And I can give those to him and then I'm gonna buy some new ones. So I've ordered a, um, I ordered it last night actually, a Swiss Diamond 20 or 18 centimeter saucepan. So I'll show it to you when I get it. Okay, um, Calm, the date and chocolate cake is in that same book, The Feast Goes On. It's called Date and Chocolate Tort. Um, now you see it's sort of forming like a sludgy, uh, sort of a sludgy mixture of sugar and honey. We're just going to stir that, and soon it'll start to melt in a couple minutes. I wanted to tell you, Calm actually asked a question this morning, and I have to remember what it was, and I want to tell you the answer. Ah, uh, yes, Jewish Chinese brisket. Jewish Chinese brisket that I was talking about yesterday, and that I made actually last night with the brisket from Field to Fork, is not in a book. It's on the website, and um, just search Jewish Chinese brisket, and you'll see it on the website. And it was actually quite delicious, but... I'm going to confess, by the time I got to eat my brisket last night, I had eaten, you know, half a tonne of sesame sweet. I'd eaten some honey snap biscuits that I was making. I'd eaten, like, so much, some sourdough toast. Oh, I was filming a thing about croissants. I'd eaten two croissants. Like, I was already full by dinner time. So, you know, when you're full, you can't really appreciate something delicious. Okay, um... Jen, it's a good question. Are the Swiss diamond healthy to cook with? You know what? I hope so. That's all I can say. I'm trusting that they are. Um, they're not Teflon. They use some other technology which is supposed to be better. You know, that's that's it. Um, that's all I can say. Because there is a rumour that Bessemer is not good for you. And my family have been using it for decades. So I hope that's not true and it just might be a rumour. So see what's happening to the sugar? It now looks like slushy snow okay which is great that's what i want it to do okay and i'm just going to keep stirring it's nice to do this in a little pot um susie the brisket was good um, i talked about it in the beginning the um, fatty part of the brisket which is called the deckle is fantastic to cook with and to roast with and to baste and to have that caramelized fat around the edges and the succulent meat that's the cut that i'm going to be using because that's what i want my brisket to be um, and the flat part, which is the lean part, don't love. It's not my cuppa. 
It's great for making um, salt beef and that sort of thing where you boil it, but for roasting in the oven, it's not what I want. Okay, I want you to see what's happening to this now. It's starting to melt. Now it looks like slushy spring snow that's got dirt in it. Okay, that's exactly what this looks like. So remember, if you are cooking this now and it's starting to melt, you need to have your baking sheet, baking paper curved facing that way on your bench top. You need to have your rolling pin ready and you need a second sheet to put on top, okay? Um, Susie, that's okay if you were late. You know what, Liz was also late and um, you know I'll have to have a talking to you guys later about being late, but that's okay, at least you're here now. Okay, I am laughing. I was laughing this morning actually about um, my clogs the other day and those of you who thought the sound was hilarious. I'm going to turn it down to medium low now. You thought the sound of my clogs was very funny. Can I tell you what I'm wearing on my feet today? I am wearing, and I can't really show you. I can't show you. Okay, ready? I'll show you. <laughs> I'm wearing Birkenstocks and socks. Now, I don't know about you, but I love Birkenstocks and socks as a comfortable thing to wear. And it reminds me of when I went to Singapore with my sister. Um... Esther and I went to Singapore, maybe it was two and a half years ago. We had an amazing trip. It was all about the food. And Esther's a mad walker and she made me walk like, oh my God, like everywhere. Like if we were going somewhere that was like 16 kilometers away, she's like, no, let's walk, right? So we're walking around in the stinking humidity. Let me just interrupt and show you. See, it's melting and I'm going to keep stirring. Stinking humidity of Singapore in sandals, right? And what happened is you know your feet sweat a bit and then you get rubbing on your sandals or your thongs or whatever you're wearing on your feet your Birkenstocks and you get blisters so what I did was I put my sports socks on under my sandals or my Birkenstocks and wore them around the streets of Singapore and then I'd get to the restaurant and take my socks off but then by the third night I'm like stuff it who cares and I would wear my socks and my Birkenstocks into the restaurant and I didn't care and I just owned that new fashion statement. So I think it's actually quite a nice thing to do. It feels so comfortable to wear, you know, if your feet are a bit chilly or a bit sweaty, to put socks and Birkenstocks. What do we think, socks and sandals? Uh, do you remember that, Esther? Oh, we had so much fun. We ate that Hainanese chicken. Was that the Hainanese chicken? Um, and we went to a cooking class and, oh, we had a very good time. We ate a lot of delicious things. Absolutely delicious. Oh, hello, Denise. Nice to see you here. Okay, so I want you to see what's happening. It now looks like mustard colour. It's exactly what we want it to look like. And it's going to start to bubble soon. And once it bubbles, we're going to just bubble it for a couple minutes, okay? I don't want it. To, this is not a, a case where I'm taking it to the edge of caramel. This is not what this is about. I want this to be a beautiful mid-range caramel. It's going to boil for maybe... I don't know, 30 seconds, a minute, let's see how we go. But we're trying to stir it because what we want is we want the sugar crystals to dissolve before it starts to boil so it's not cloudy. And in our new book, which, which is of course out of my reach and I'm not going to leave this, we have sections in the Now for Something Sweet, we have a few how-to sections and one of them is on sugar and we spent a lot of time working out guidelines and putting all the temperatures that you need so that everything is in on two pages so have a look if you haven't seen that in now for something sweet um yeah amit says birkenstocks are the only things we should be wearing they're good for your feet and socks makes them a bit comfortable yeah that's what esther said we had to walk from one meal to the next this is true i don't even think we got in one taxi maybe we did and at the end of the trip i was just exhausted <laughs> in the best possible way. And we were doing what, like 30,000 steps a day or something crazy like that. All right, do you need a sugar thermometer? No, not for this one, not at all, because it's actually going to tell me when it's ready. Um, okay, so this is now cooking nicely. And this is quite dark, and I'm just about ready to pop the sesame seeds in, okay? So I've got my sesame seeds ready. Remember, we've got the bench ready with our baking paper. I don't want you to forget that. And as soon as this starts to come to the boil, which is going to be in a minute, I'm going to just cook it and judge the colour of it. Okay, I'm going to put my light on here, I think. So I think you can see the colour a bit better. Okay, so 
all the sugar crystals are now dissolved and it's going to start to boil okay yum don't put your finger in to taste it really it's super super hot okay please be careful everyone I know I keep saying that um, okay how's everyone going who's cooking along Deb how's yours looking I know you can't type and watch caramel at the same time impossible that's nice all right Who's like me and keeps a tea bag for hours and hours and keeps adding water? Am I the only one who does that? All right, this is starting to smell beautifully caramel and I have bubbles, okay? Now that I've got bubbles, I'm gonna turn it up the tiniest bit. Concentrating. Okay, Melanie, don't worry, just turn it up a little bit and just keep stirring, okay? It's all good. Good, Deb. Very impressive that you can do even an emoji and do this. I know Deb's cooking a big batch today. All right, boiling nicely. Can you see it boiling? It's very frothy. It's really coming to a good boil. And I want to put the sesame seeds in now. Smells, smells like caramel. It's boiling really nicely. It's getting browner around the edges. Sesame seeds are going in. Turn the heat off and give it a stir. And I'm going to actually move you here with me okay that's perfect give it a stir remember this is super super hot and as soon as it's well combined working super fast here i want you to tip it onto your baking paper see this is why you need it ready okay do not touch this mixture it is too hot to touch okay put your baking paper on top and gently be careful it's going to squish out of the sides okay we're rolling it as thin as we can without being obsessive about it because it doesn't matter if it's a bit thick but just take care I can't say it enough times I don't want to hear that anybody's gone to hospital with third degree burns from sesame caramel now just press it down I was talking to Deb this morning about why I halved the recipe. I find it's much less likely to come out the sides if it's a smaller quantity. It's just easier to make. You can work harder at getting it thin if you want it thin, okay? There we are. See, that's come out of the side there, and I need to be careful. I know I'm going on and on about the safety, but it's the Jewish mother in me. I can't help it. Um, and you know what? Yours might look like a map of Australia or whatever. Mine did last night. This is just like a weird shape. Okay, done. How's everyone going? Is anyone up to where I am? And is anyone ready to peel off yet? Now, this just peels off, okay? I'm going to do half to show you the difference. I'm going to peel half off. It's amazing, isn't it, to make that in, in you know, 10 minutes. I just want that to cool and I want to show you the difference when you leave the baking paper on and when you take it off. I can't remember which one's better, but we'll see it in a minute. I want to talk to you about this pan now, which is very sticky. Um, I'm going to fill that with boiling water right up to the top and I'm going to leave the spoon in. I'm going to put it on the stove and I'm going to boil it for a couple of minutes and then it's going to be clean. Don't put that in the sink. You'll never get it off, okay? Calm said, mine wasn't liquidy enough, so it's thick. Couldn't roll thin, but tasty. Yeah. So, um, did you cook your sugar for long enough? Was it, was it liquidy enough? It needs to, if you've measured everything properly, it should be absolutely perfect. So maybe weigh your ingredients next time rather than, I don't know if you do it by cup measure. Um, it's really important, I think, to weigh things sometimes um, because then you can't make a mistake. I don't know, I'm not suggesting you made a mistake, come, but that's sometimes what happens. So now it's cooling down really quickly. Yum. Now I want to talk about salt. I didn't have any salt in the mixture, but you really could. So I had a little taste of this this morning with a little sprinkle of, um, yes, you know what I'm going to say, don't you? The Olsen's sea salt. And it was really delicious. And I think it might be nicer to sprinkle a bit at the end rather than put it in the mixture. I think I might like to see it a little bit. If you like the idea of sesame and salt and sugar, I think I quite like it. Okay, so now it's called... The danger is over, okay? Um, and you can see how beautiful and thin it is. I think that if you take the paper off earlier, one of them makes it shinier, and I can't remember which one. All right. 
Ah, okay. So it's better to leave your paper on longer. Let's have a look at the difference. Can you do it? Uh, no, other way around. So the one where the paper was on is more matte. And the one where I pulled the paper off quickly is a little bit shinier. So I think it's better to take the paper off as soon as you can. Um, and pretty quickly, you saw I just made it. It's already ready to eat. Now mine is slightly too, I took it slightly too far. I think that was the 10 seconds where I moved the phone was the 10 seconds that it should have already been out. But again, practice makes perfect with this and you need to just play with the sugar mixture. Mm, it's very good. It's really delicious. So what I would do now is just break it up into shards and keep it in an airtight container, not in the fridge. Once it's completely cool, put it in an airtight container um, and it should be fine. Don't leave it out because it will just go a bit soft. It's really good. Mmm. And super easy. So that is the sesame honey sweet. Has anyone, how's everyone going? Deb, how are you going? Melanie, how's your sugar going? Are we getting there? Mmm, it's delicious. Very good. Lisa, are you cooking along? Oh, Deb, I'm so happy you've done it. It's good, isn't it? I'm so quick and easy. Mmm, I'm just going to eat this all day. Um, oh, did I get this at Accoutrement in 2015? I can't remember that. Really? Wow, okay. This would be great on top of ice cream. Ice cream, crunch it on top. Um, it's good just as a little treat with a cup of peppermint tea. It's so easy and so quick. Makes a beautiful gift in a little cellophane bag. I think it's a great thing for any time, but also if you're celebrating Jewish New Year. Okay, that's it. Yeah, what about a drizzle of chocolate? Didn't even think about that. Mmm, chocolate and sesame. Talk to me about chocolate and sesame. What do we know that has chocolate and sesame in it that we like? I've got to think about it. I'm trying to think. Tell me something that's chocolate and sesame. What do you think, guys? Does it work? Is it good together? Because that would be a good idea. What you could actually do is when it's hot, pull off the baking paper, put some chocolate on top and it might melt if we think we like chocolate and sesame together. Um, chocolate coated halvo is chocolate and sesame. That's true. Very, very interesting. Okay, so... Um, Deborah, I'm sorry you missed the demo. You can watch it on IGTV. I don't generally post the recipes. I just post the ingredients. The recipe is actually in our second book, The Feast Goes On. Um, okay, I want to just tell you about tonight. For those of you who um, celebrate Rosh Hashanah, if you're part of um, the Sydney Jewish community, you may have got an email. I am doing a cooking demo for all the synagogues at 7.30 via the Great Synagogue. Don't have to be Jewish to watch it or participate, but it is a Jewish themed event. Um, and I'd love all of you or any of you to come along. You need to go to the Great Synagogues Instagram or Facebook and you'll see how to book. It's a free thing. And I'm going to be making honey snap biscuits and apple pie cake for Rosh Hashanah. Um, apple and honey pie cake, actually. So that's going to be tonight at 7.30. And then tomorrow I'm back. We're doing Israeli rice pilaf, which is delicious side dish. And then on Friday, of course, is the classic, the best honey cake ever. But we're doing a loaf size this week. Um, and then, of course, on Sunday, I'm doing the Russian honey cake um, cooking class, which is a paid event. Sign up on our website. It's going to be fantastic. I've got lots signed up and I've got room for a few more if anyone wants to join. And you can make a big cake. It's like got eight layers with beautiful cream cheese, cream filling and icing. Or you can do two small ones. Or you can do three, medium, middle, small, and you can do four tiny. So there's all different ranges and um, lots of things. That's Sunday, 11 a.m. to 1 o'clock. <sighs> I am so busy, Mim. You are absolutely right. It's a really busy week, actually, but I'm really enjoying it. Next week will be a few days off when we have Jewish New Year. Um, thanks all for joining me today. It's been sweet. It's been so sweet cooking with all this sugar. Um, and now we've got this amazing, amazing, look at this. 
a miracle to, to take sesame seeds and make this. Like, honestly, it's bloody good, huh? Um, I hope you feel the same way about your sesame sweet. I do. I'm going to wrap these up and uh, I might give them as gifts. We'll see how we go. Anyway, good to see you all. I'm going to head off now and get ready for tonight. Remember, tonight is via the Great Synagogue. The rest of the Instagram lives are just here, 11.30, and then Sunday, Russian Honey Cake via our website. See you all. Till next time. Oh, one more thing. For those of you who are keen for the Harris Farm recipes that we did, go to Harris Farm Markets Instagram, and our recipes are there. Two really, really great recipes. Particularly, no, not even particularly. They're both really great. A new one, apple and honey cupcakes with cream cheese icing and a honey caramel nut tart, which is delicious. Anyway, I'm going to say bye now. I'm going to reach over and turn this off. Bye all. Have a great day. Stay safe. If you're in lockdown, stay home. Hang in there, everyone. Take it easy. And everyone who's free, enjoy that freedom. Happy spring and bye.